The Commonwealth Bank and Westpac have, in the past day, cut the serviceability buffers for those who apply to refinance loans. Nathan Zaya is the banking analyst with Morningstar and joins me now. Nathan, always good to chat to you about this. So just explain what Westpac and the Commonwealth Bank have done. Yeah, so they're basically saying if a borrower has an LVR below 80%, you know, they've, they've been able to meet their mortgage repayments to date, then the bank will look to refinance them or offer them a loan, even if they're not meeting that 3% buffer that you initially mentioned. And, you know, they've, they've ruled it off at, at 1%. So they're not extending you any more debt. They, the, the, the upside potentially for the borrower is, you're going to move to another bank, you might be getting a lower rate, so you're effectively in a better position than if you were stuck uh, with your existing bank. And, and look, that that might add a little bit more refinancing and customers moving, but a lot of those borrowers that you know were with their bank and maybe unable to move elsewhere, I mean, banks have been pretty competitive in offering lower, lower rates anyway to keep customers. So we're not sure exactly how much movement it, it might create. So just explain one other thing. It was the Council of Financial Regulators, which is, you know, APRA, uh, the banking regulator, which is the Reserve Bank, which is ASIC, among, amongst others, who decided to keep this rule that you had to assess a loan three percentage points above. So if you're paying 6% currently, they say, well, OK, can you pay 9%? So that's what it's about. How does Westpac and the Commonwealth Bank get to say, well, OK, that's your rules. We're going to play by different rules for certain people where we'll judge them on their ability to pay 1% more. Yeah, it's interesting. When they came out and said that, it kind of, you would think that, OK, that's that's the end of it. But, yeah, I don't think they would have went around their back with this. I think there would have been a lot of discussions about it. And effectively, what they're saying is, yes, OK, in general, we will stick to the 3% buffer. But in these cases where, you know, we know the, the borrower's repayment history, you know, we're, we're confident in their ability to keep employment, you know, remain employed, um, and, and we think that they can meet these loan repayments, 1% buffer is, is adequate. So I think that I, I doubt that, that this wasn't done in, consult, in consultation yeah, with those, those regulatory bodies. I mean, yeah, that, that would be asking for, for it if, if they did that. OK, because there's one other aspect about this, and that is that those buffers, you might argue, are there to protect the customer, but they're also there to protect the bank itself. This is about having unquestionably strong banks and therefore not having people going broke and landing bad and doubtful debts back on the banks, creating question marks about the strength of those banks. Yeah, that that, that is definitely true. Uh, and, I mean, that, that 1% buffer, like... It, it might sound like enough for now, but if you rewind 12 months ago, I don't think anyone foresaw where rates would end up. So it is a risk that you're saying, okay, as long as you can cope with 1% higher, then you know we, we think you'll be fine. But I think it also says one other thing that the banks are uh, comfortable that you know they have their assumed living expenses, but they think that households push come to shove will cut by more than that. And I think that will be the real test. If if need be, it might mean lower living standards and it might not be nice, but people can cut below that, that assumed living expense metric anyway. It also says to me that maybe those big banks think we're very close to the peak of interest rates in Australia because otherwise they might be wanting to assess their customers at the higher rates. But if they're saying, well, OK, if you've got enough of a, an equity in your home, 1% will be enough if we want to refinance, that kind of says to me that the banks themselves are, are, are really thinking that we're close to the peak of these rates. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I agree with that. Um, but like I said earlier, they, like many of us, did, did not predict the rate cycle and the stickiness of inflation. So, I mean, let, let's hope they're right. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But the other point also, just very quickly, is it aids the competitiveness within that banking sector so the customers do have some choice. Yeah, definitely. But, but like I said earlier, I think we've already been seeing, you know, banks know that, especially with the fixed rate customers, they're going to roll off. They know that customers are looking for, for a sharp price at the moment and just picking up your phone and calling your bank has resulted in the bank 
dropping your rate materially. So I don't know how much more, you know, or, or how material this this will be. You know, it's those people that that perhaps couldn't move before. You, you add them into the potential movers, and then what percentage of those don't, you know, just stay with their existing bank as well? Now it's going to be interesting to watch it. Nathan Zaya from Morningstar. Always good to chat to you. Many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Ross.